Hi, it's Carrie. Today I'm looking at some of my favourite herbivores, including Styracosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Triceratops, Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus. Give a thumbs up if you like dinosaurs. Parasaurolophus, Stegosaurus. There is a fun ending on today's video. And Kentrosaurus. Can you tell me how the Kentrosaurus defended itself? Diplodocus had a row of spines running down its back. Its backbone had extra bones giving its name double beam. These would help support and move its neck and tail. The long neck may have been used to forage for food in forests that would have been inaccessible due to its massive size and also for poking into wetlands to get mosses and ferns where they could not stand on firm ground. It was a herbivore that most likely ate conifers, other seed ferns and mosses with its blunt peg-like teeth. Have a look at that tail there. It had elephant-like legs with five-toed feet. Notice the large thumb claws there. Its front legs were shorter than its back legs. It was 90 feet long with a 26 foot long neck and a 45 foot whip-like long tail. It was one of the longest land animals to ever live. It may have used its whip-like tail for protection. Brachiosaurus lived during the middle to late Jurassic period. It was one of the tallest and largest dinosaurs. It had a long neck, small head with its nostrils on top of its head and a short thick tail. Brachiosaurus lived on land. Most predators like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus were half its size. Their best defense was size, plus their clawed feet and tail. Brachiosaurus walked on four legs. Notice that the front legs were longer than its hind legs. The longer front legs and its very long neck made Brachiosaurus look rather giraffe-like, reaching heights of up to 40 to 50 feet tall. Brachiosaurus had 52 teeth, 26 teeth in each jaw. It used its chisel-like teeth to graze the tops of the trees. Parasaurolophus lived in the late Cretaceous period. It was a long crested, duck billed dinosaur. The crest grew to six feet in length and may have helped Parasaurolophus identify male and females. Increased hearing ability with acoustic resonance and also helped regulate body temperature. The Parasaurolophus nostrils are at the end of its narrow, short snout. Parasaurolophus had an unusual tail that was tall but narrow. It may have been brightly coloured and used to attract mates. Apatosaurus lived during the late Jurassic period and was one of the largest land animals that ever existed. Its small head had a long skull and was less than 2 feet or 60 centimetres long. The nostrils are on top of the head. It held its head 17 feet or 5 meters off the ground which gave it protection from Allosaurus which only grew to 15 feet or 4.5 meters tall. Predators would have kept away from the scary tail and clawed feet. Apatosaurus may have used its tail as a third leg in order to reach and graze very tall vegetation. Baby Apatosaurus hatched from enormous eggs that were 1 foot or 30 centimeters in diameter. Fossilised footprint tracks have been found that were about 3 feet or 1 metre wide. Triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. It was the dominant herbivore of its time. It grew to 9 metres or 29 and a half feet in length and 3 metres or 9.8 feet in height, weighing somewhere between 6 and 12 tonnes. It lived at the same time and was probably preyed upon by Tyrannosaurus. When threatened, Triceratops would charge into its enemy like a rhinoceros. Triceratops was quite fearsome to look at with its large bony frill, three horns and massive size. Triceratops is the biggest and best known of all ceratopsians. 
stick as though I slipped in the late Jurassic period. There are 17 bony plates on its back and a heavily spiked tail for protection. The tail was a lethal weapon. The four spikes could be swung under the unprotected belly of a predator with deadly force. Notice the back legs are longer than the front ones, which are sprawled out to the sides. The tail spikes could grow to 4 feet or 1.2 meters long. The front feet had 5 toes with hoof-like tips and the rear feet had 3 short wide toes with hooves. It may have reared up onto its large hind legs to reach vegetation. Ankylosaurus lived in the late Cretaceous period. It was a prehistoric tank with oval plates protecting its whole body except the underbelly. These plates and the two rows of spikes along its body, a horned head and a club-like tail protected it well from predators. It even had bony plates as eyelids. It could defend itself by swinging its club-like tail from side to side. The club-like tail could swing with enough force to break the leg bones of most carnivores, including T-Rex. Flipping Ankylosaurus was really the only way to wound it. Kentrosaurus was a stegosaurian dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period. It walked on all fours with short forelimbs and long straight hind limbs with hoof-like claws on its toes. The longest spikes were on the long horizontal muscular tail and were its main weapon. The tail could possibly swing in a semicircle arc behind it. Swing speeds at the end of that tail were up to 50 kilometers or 30 miles per hour. Continuous swipes with the spike tail would slash open the skin of its attacker and rip into the soft tissues, possibly breaking ribs or facial bones. More direct blows would have fractured even sturdy leg bones or crippled small to medium sized theropods. Styracosaurus, I couldn't make up my mind so we have both of them here. It was a ceratopsian dinosaur from the Cretaceous period. I really like this dinosaur for its impressive and intimidating appearance. It had six long horns extending from its neck frill with smaller horns above each eye and a 60 centimeter or two foot long horn protruding from its nose. Styracosaurus was a relatively large dinosaur reaching lengths of five and a half meters or 18 feet and weighing nearly three tons. It stood about 1.8 meters or six feet tall. And here's my other one. It had four short legs and a bulky body and a short tail. The skull had a beak and shearing cheek teeth that were continually replaced. They were used for slicing up plants. The strong beak was used for snapping branches. Like other ceratopsians, this dinosaur may have been a herd animal traveling in large groups as fossils grouped together have been found in bone beds. Like most ceratopsids, Styracosaurus had large fenestrae, which are the openings in the skull in its frill. Its name means spiked lizard. Thank you for watching my video, please share my videos with your friends, see you again soon.